So, hello everyone. I will uh, conveniently not speak about the previous talk. So <laughs> You may ask questions afterwards. So I'm really happy to, to present here like the progress we made on this project that's very dear to me. Um, it's about the ability to recover remote execution when you are using rules Nix packages. This talk is a story of like all the work we did so far and the goals we have reached, but also maybe like just a few one or two things that still need to be done. In the tradition of like French theater, let me open this play with the mandatory three coups. First, this is a teamwork. So the protagonists enter Intuitive Surgical with Nikhil and Alexi who are present here if you want to ask questions after them. They are a company making surgical robots and they decided to get rid of CMake and to use Bazel and rules Nix packages. The thing is they picked the technology, but they wanted like, more people to join the team. So enter Twig, the OSPO part of Modus Create, where we have some expertise in both Nix and Bazel. And I do happen to know these two topics. So this is a match made in heaven. Then also enter BuildBuddy as the remote execution provider and the remote cache that we use for Bazel. And finally enter nixbuild.net with the capability to do the same thing for Nix. This was the missing piece of the puzzle that we found only recently. Well, we are happy to have uh, all of these people here with us. So the stage is set in a company located a few miles away from here, where they produce surgical robots like that. The size of the code base is just huge, but not only the code base, also like whatever they produce, the number of like remote uh, platforms. This is, <laughs> this is just crazy. They use Nix packages to assemble nine different package sets targeting different CPU architectures. These serve 22 different target platforms like different boards or different chips for all the parts of the robots. There is a number that I like a lot. It's like this 400,000 something. It's the number that keeps increasing on both sides. So you want it to reach 100%, but Bazel keeps increasing the left part while you want the right part to move. And you're waiting for these numbers so you know them pretty well. That's like what Bazel makes you wait on. One thing that is important for later is also the sheer size of the different things. So if you start with an object file, it's pretty small. But then you assemble that into like applications, library, and then images that can be flashed on the board. And then you have like this huge 90 gigs thing that's needed when you need to go offline and you need everything with you. So we assemble things from like small, very small objects to very big things. OK, a small word <laughs> about why Rulesnix packages. For, um, in this setup, it makes a lot of sense, I think, because you have like dynamic dependency. So you can say, hey, I want like this package from Nix, and Bazel will suddenly see it magically appear. It's granular, so if you change one Nix package, then it will rebuild like the Bazel the actions that depend on that package, but not the whole world. It's not like as if you change your Docker environment and suddenly you don't really know what needs to change, but probably everything or some of it, or you need to be very precise about like, the dependencies from your Docker environment. Of course, it brings the power of Nix, like I said, so we can assemble um, consistent package sets. We want to target this very strange like peak architecture or whatever. Then as soon as we have like, the tool chain implemented into Nix, Nix, will, you know, Nix package will provide us with a complete set of packages that have been built to target that uh, platform. And like the transitive dependencies are also correct. So we have like no diamond dependencies and wrong versions. Like everything is consistent in the end. And finally, what I love most is like everything is in the single monorepo, all the Nix files. So the definition of all of your build dependencies are there. You are not relying on any Docker. You are not relying on any environment. You are not relying on anything. Everything is like source inside the repo. Just a few notes about the timeline for that. I mean, it's 
pretty much a classical migration from CMake to Bazel. It started three years ago, then there are some iterations trying to design how it would work, like trying to find how to make it happen. Then suddenly this was part of the main CI and like developers were not allowed to break what we had done already, so just a major milestone. Then we made some performance improvements so that it's like not blocking. And when it was deemed good enough, then it became the main CI. And that's why you know that you've mostly finished the migration. Most of like, the old CMX stuff is gone. And you can focus on like, even more performance improvement, new features, because like, the company continues to move forward. And we are at a time with the red line where it kind of makes sense to investigate remote execution. We knew that it would be difficult by picking root packages. But now is like, the time where it seems to be happening. So I'm really excited. This project of remote execution is something that I like. <laughs> wanted to work with, and I started to work uh, around uh, a few years ago. I made a first proof of concept, like a design document, then I presented the results of my proof of concept at the Basel Exchange. Um, at Basel Exchange, yeah. But we had to drop it at Intuitive because the build was not that stable. Remote execution was adding like extra unstable features. <laughs> And it would be like the tree that hides the forest. People would be complaining that it's like remote execution that crashes everything while there were still other underlying issues. It was like not the right time yet. In the meantime, Constantino Sideris from Twig made uh, like uh, an open source proof of concept. So you can download all of the files. There is a blog post on the Twig blog about that. Uh, it's working well, but again, it's like a proof of concept on a simple code base. What we are doing now, like what I've been doing for the past few months is like preparation on the intuitive code base so that it could be remotely executed. As you probably know, it means like executing every single action in Bazel sandbox to check that all the inputs are provided, that everything is correctly cached, that we don't rely on everything stuff. And now that these preparations are done, I was able to run some like preliminary experiments, which I will present, of course, uh, at the end of the talk. We started with a very a very naive idea that we would switch to Bazel 7, get SkyMailed, get build without the bytes, and get remote execution like right after that. It would be easy, isn't it? Well, we hit tons of problems. We had to disable uh, SkyMailed because we were running Nix actions in parallel with Bazel actions, and they would like had no knowledge of each other. So they would like oversubscribe the system resource, and one of them would crash. Usually Bazel, but it doesn't matter. I mean, the bill is dead anyway. So that uh, was not uh, possible. Then we had to disable build without the bytes. That's mostly due to the fact that we are using a disk cache, but uh, some other issues also came in the way. So we are in the process of fixing that. I'm like so happy that Bazel 7.4 is going to address most of the issues with the disk cache. So this is like a huge pain remove. Thank you for the continuous improvement of that of Bazel. This is just very nice. So maybe you think I'm like too eager because I want like everything all at once. But I think they are all intertwined in a way that these three features are kind of depending on the same uh, base uh, layers. So if I focus on remote execution with rootless Nix packages, it means that I will have like remote Nix to be implemented and remote Bazel execution implemented. And to uh, like execute this remote Bazel execution, I will need to adapt all of my rules to check that it works well, and also like be sure that I don't have like uh, that I have everything hermetic, that it works in a Docker sandbox and it, like it's perfectly well specified in the build files. And once I have that, basically I can go up and you see that I feel I'm fulfilling all the requirements for all of these three things at the same time. Because to get SkyMail working, I just need remote Nix execution. If Nix is executing remotely, it doesn't use local resources, so I can start like doing SkyMail and executing the build directly. Build without the bytes, it's like it's just a correct Thing. Otherwise, you're like downloading the wrong artifacts. That's probably not fun. And the current status, just like spoiling <laughs> the end of the talk, is like SkyMail works because we have remote Nix execution. Remote execution with root Nix packages, there are like a few things that need a tuning to integrate like remote Nix execution and remote Bazel execution correctly. It's working, but I don't say it's not production ready. 
And built without the bytes, it's kind of stuck on some features that will be addressed in Bazel 7.4. So now the problem statement in <laughs> the right setup. What we have is like dynamically built Nix packages. And these happen as a side effect of running a remote, uh, like a, a repository rule on the local machine. And that repository rule brings Nix packages into like, the scope in the environment of the build. So that whenever an action runs, it's, we magically see the Nix package in the environment. Of course, if you take that action, move it to the remote execution environment, there, there is no reason why Nix should be there. We didn't do anything for that. And that's the thing we are trying to address with three different designs that we envisioned. One of them is like what we do for every other package set, Python, Rust, whatever. You just show all of your files to Bazel. You describe, like, you describe all of your targets, the dependencies between them, and then Bazel will say, okay, these are source files. It will just sync them to the remote execution environment for you. Easy enough, but we store the data twice. We have everything in Nix, and then suddenly we also need it in the Bazel cache. That's pretty bad, <laughs> given that I couldn't, I can't already not build the whole, um, I mean, I cannot make a full build on my machine right now, because one terabyte is not enough. So I like space is already at a premium. But otherwise, it would be fairly simple, except for what was mentioned in the previous talk. Oh, sorry, I said I wouldn't mention it. Like, Nix uses slash Nix slash store. It's an absolute path that starts from the root of the file system, and there is no way Bezel is going to handle with that. So this, this is a dead end from the start, I think. We could use something that's more experimental. Uh, there is a, like a resource, an asset. What's the name for it? Yeah, there is a remote asset API that has like, been designed and that some people are want to use. I don't know what's the status of that project, so uh, correct me if I'm like, saying wrong about it. But it's the idea that you can inform Bazel that your build needs like, some remote assets, some things that need to be there for the build. And it happens out of band, so it's not linked to a specific action, but it's more like something that you want to be present on the remote builder. The thing is, we need to tell Bazel what we need, and it's very difficult to go from an action dependencies to say, hey, this is not a real Bazel dependency. It's more like a remote asset. It's difficult to make this change. So the remote asset API is like, it's not as dynamic as what we are doing with Rulesnix packages. Although it would be fun to, exist, to reuse something that exists, because the third solution, or the third ID, is sharing using the same side effect that we use to build Nix package locally. I mean, if we already have a side effect of building the Nix package locally and making sure that it's available, we can at the same time also connect to a remote system and ensure that it's built there and ensure that the file is available in a, like, for anyone to use. In particular, we can ensure that it will be available for all of the remote Bazel workers. And so magically, whenever the action is transferred, to the remote execution environment, then the Nix path will also be there. Of course, like this thing it requires way more infrastructure, but the first one is too heavy, and I'm not sure it's going to work. The second one is experimental, and I'm not sure it's going to work either, because Nix is very picky. The third one, I know it's going to work. I know how to make it work, but I also know it's a lot of work, and that's why we are here with, after two years and a half, and it's like, finally taking shape in a real production environment. If you will follow with me, I would like to make, to borrow this example from a previous presentation where I explain how it works in a few different steps. So we start in a cluster with three different parts. There is the local machine, of course, then a remote Nix server and remote Nix builders and a remote Bazel server, the cache and the scheduler, and the remote executors. So when we start with a local tree, this is a tree, actually, not a broccoli, but you get the idea. Uh, when you start with a local tree, it is impure because it depends on things from the system. But it's not that impure because these things from the system, these are Nix packages, and we know they are pure by Nix, not true Bazel. So this one requires Zlib and GCC. So Bazel will run the remote, the, 
external repository, and then we start like all the side effects. We send the request to get Zilli built to the Nix server, then that gets dispatched to the workers, gets back into the Nix uh, cache. Uh, yeah, <laughs> gets back into the Nix cache, and then it can be downloaded locally. So in the end, it looks like we just created these files locally, but a lot happened behind the scenes, at least not visible by Bazel. Then the real remote execution from Bazel kicks in. It takes part of the trees, these action that needs to be built, sends them to the remote executors. The remote executors like start the build, suddenly they fall in a hole. They need a Nix package there, but because they are an NFS file system and we bind mounted it, they will find it. It's already like in the Nix server, so NFS will magically <laughs> look like these files are always present. And you know they will be present because they were built before. So there is no way we are like depending on something that, that is not present but should be. Then the build happens, like, uh, I know that part creates oranges, the other one cherries or whatever. It gets back in the um, build buddy cache, the remote execution cache, and then downloaded locally, and you have like you build remotely executed, and perfectly hermetic, clean, thanks to the magic of all of these things. Like I said, there were like some preparations uh, needed in the code base. I plan to go into like the details with you because I like like going to the meat, but it's clearly apparent that I cannot make it fit into like, the time that I'm allocated, so I will gloss over them. And if you have questions, you're much welcome to come later on. So one thing we did, and that's probably the most important one, because we are already using side effects to share Nix packages, we want to remove as much as possible data from Bazel caches so that we don't duplicate things. What we used to do before is like say, hey, I have a CC library. The shared object is just in lib slash lib everything.so. We use a glob, Bazel sees the files, but then Bazel makes a copy of all of these files. We don't want that because we will provide them anyway. So I changed all of these invocations with link options, saying, hey, use that Nix path. It's in the environment. Don't bother, it's magic, but it will be there. And Bazel is very happy to trust me, so that's fine. And then just say, okay, I want to link GL and find it wherever it needs to be. Of course, I needed to make some changes somewhere else for that to happen. And in this case, in like Rules Nix package itself, because before there was no way to know the output path of Nix. And in this case, you see that we need to write it in the uppercase L option. We made some improvements to Nix evaluation, because Nix is pretty efficient. I mean, it's nice. You build one package, you get the results, it's fine. I benchmarked it, it takes about one second, so it's okay. But if you have like 300 packages and they are all calling Nix to do the evaluation, then you are like to pay 300 seconds. That's huge. Especially when you need to do that for like a build that doesn't do anything. <laughs> so I found like ways to make it faster and faster and faster still. Some of these things I was not able to merge into Nix because they don't want it. It's like conflicting with other features. So. I don't care. I have all of my Nix package described in my mono repo. So I just added the patch in my mono repo. I'm using a patch Nix version. Nobody cares about that. It's working pretty well. I mean, I would like to upstream these things. I will probably find a way. But if it's too difficult, I will just stick with what I can do. I also like tons of problems with Bazel making copies of files and copies of files. And like, because it's an external repository, whenever it discovers a new file, it restarts the rule. So if you like 200 files, then you're like 200 squared complexity. So it, like, it gets really slow. We have to change that. And again, the solution is like, give Bazel strings. Hey, I'm evaluating things that are in that store path. So Bazel sees a string. And that string is, is content addressed. So if there is any change, Bazel will see a change in like, the string itself, but it doesn't deal with the data. And we can do it again with the build plan. So when Nix has evaluated the Nix expression, it comes out with a build plan. And the build plan is also like a unique hash in the Nix path. So I can say, hey, I need to build that package. And this is like the name of the build plan. And if the name of the build plan didn't change, then it's the same Nix package. Bazel knows that because it sees no change in the inputs, and so it doesn't rebuild. Well, the only thing that I couldn't fix <laughs> is the remote execution quality of service. If you think about it, like Nix and Bazel, the way I see it, they are just like two different layers doing the same thing. Bazel 
it supports remote execution, but you don't get remote execution with Bazel for free. You need to buy, I mean, to set up some infrastructure or to buy some like provider to, uh, to provide it for you. For Nix, it's kind of the same, except it tricks you into thinking that it does remote execution for you because it's possible, kind of using hacks, because they have a daemon and protocol, so you can use SSH to go to another machine, and so it seems you can do remote execution, but it doesn't provide all the things we need because we need to be sure that the paths will remain there for some time, that they are like, accessible over like, NFS and stuff. So that's where we're like, okay, maybe we need something that's like the same as BuildBuddy does for us for Bazel. We need someone to do it with Nix. And that's where we form like NixBuild.net. They are there, so have a chat with them too. <laughs> now for the results. And uh, I'm sorry, I really wanted to show how great it is and like I've finished and say it was deployed and stuff, but things never turn out like we want. <laughs> So these results have been collected over the last three years. It's just fresh, it's new. Uh, these are correct, I reproduced them, but that's all I get and sometimes there are limitations. So let's go ahead. We have one CI task that's doing benchmarking. It takes 80 minutes, one hour and 20 minutes. That's when you just do not reuse any of the action cache from Bazel. So all the actions need to run again and that's on a single node. So now I did the same thing with my like six node cluster. I mean, don't give the specs, but these are the same machines, so it's like six times more computing power, basically. Run it. I mean, who thought it was like one sixth of the time? <laughs> Nobody. Who thought it was like a bit better than 80 seconds? Who would say it was like slower? I was like so surprised by the results. It turns out it's exactly the same time. <laughs> I mean, literally, the standard deviation is like 30 seconds, right? So it's exactly the same time. I reproduced it several times. I, I banged my head at the wall. It makes no sense. It turns out it's just a coincidence. So <laughs> that's how life happens sometimes. Um, we discussed with like a remote execution people, try to understand how it works. And by reusing sandboxes, Docker sandbox, uh, on the remote machines, we managed to reduce the build time by like half. This means we have been spending kind of 40 minutes setting up Docker images and like tearing them on, <laughs> setting them up and then tearing them down. And this has nothing to do with my Nix, my root Nix packages and stuff. So see, it's like remote execution, it's like it has been presented already. It's, it's crazy sometimes. <laughs> Can we do better than that? Yes, of course. <laughs> there is some, like, some room there. But I wanted to get rid of any network transfer, for example. So I populated all the Bazel caches. And what I did is like, I don't want to reuse the action cache, but all the blobs are already present in the content address store. So whenever Bazel will build something, it will produce an output. Because it's reproducible, you will have the same output. Then the remote worker will try to upload it, and the remote cache will say, hey, I already have that blob. So this is a build that contains, like, um, that rebuilds everything on like the cluster. So all the builds are happening, but there is no or very little network uh, exchange happening. In that case, I reached like 19 minutes, and we're getting closer, as you see, to the theoretical maximum, like which is like 80 minutes divided by six. Uh, I think this is really good, although. I mean, we didn't benchmark Nix at all, right? It's just like basic remote execution, like for anyone else. I wanted to make a point about like the, the networking and the fact that we have very huge blobs that we should probably not send over the network. But this has been already discussed yesterday and like this morning, so you will find a slide online. But there is one thing that I cannot resist. We have like this 90 gig uh, image. That's why it takes 12 minutes to assemble locally. So it's huge. I mean, just like copying data from the disk to the disk, it's still 12 minutes. But if I download that on like 100 megabits uh, network, it takes two hours. So it's clearly better to like assemble it locally than downloading it. If you think about it, building it locally, it's the same as having a one gigabit network. Okay, <laughs> it gets 10 times faster. So, for the impact of our Nix sharing paths over NFS, 
Remember, 19 is the best we can do, so I like, took the same setup. And instead of having the Nix paths manually sent to all the builders, I mount the NFS so, store. And the first build is like 32 minutes. That's 13 minutes spent on like, sending Nix packages to the workers, because that's the only networking thing that needs to happen. Not good. But with NFS, we get this FS cache. So we can cache like, the remote things, the remote blobs, and it should not download as much. So I run a second experiment. Well, uh, 32 minutes. Then I run a third experiment, and it's still 32 minutes. So I asked, what's my, obviously, I made a mistake with FS cache. And it turns out, like, I've heard lots of discussion. I mean, these results are from Friday, so these are fresh, but I couldn't improve on it. Uh, I just configured it completely wrong. So I have FS cache working, but you need to provide a storage to FS cache. It doesn't like find space magically for you. So I just, there will pro probably be a blog post in the coming months about like updates and how I'm, <laughs> what are the real results about that. But we have like also discussions with nixbuild.net. They're working on like 9P VFS implementation. That one is like supposed to be faster than NFS anyway. So like we have plenty of room for, impro for improvement. My point is, we have like disable one cache, we enable one, if you play one, the other, making measurements, it's pretty tricky. So these are the results I'm sure about because I, they are pretty stable, I understand how they work. I made like tons of different ones which are very weird results and it always ends up being because one cache has the data or doesn't have the data and there are so many layers. I'm not even counting, we have a cache for the Git LFS objects. And even more, you get the idea. These, these days, I think it's very difficult to make proper measurements. Anyway, what works in this setup? For the first time, I'm able to build something that's like a real work tree. The whole intuitive work tree works. So I'm able to build it. I'm able to run the benchmark job, but I'm also able to run a full build. So yeah, this is, for me, a validation of the solution. It's possible to use it. It's not efficient yet. But we have remote execution. We have Nix execution, not perfect, but working. We have SkyMails. We can build without the bytes. And for everything, that's, that's kind of an achievement, I think. There is still future work, of course. Like, we need a lot of manual tuning. Uh, like, which actions we want to execute remotely or not remotely, which actions we want to download or not to download. Uh, Bazel is kind of funny because you can say, hey, this action, I don't want it to be on the remote cache, but then some other action depends on it. And because it's an input for remote execution, it's still uploaded. So like, <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> I mean, theoretically, the, maybe the no remote should be transitive or something. That's, that's probably to be addressed uh, at some point. Um, yeah, I mean, all the parameters, everything can be, can be tuned from, from now on. I mentioned the difficulty of making good benchmark, of course. And the last thing I care about, and I think it's like something Tweak cares about as a whole, being like an open source program office, we want to upstream most of these changes. But I really had to fight against a lot of these projects. Like Nix doesn't want all of the change because it doesn't work quite well. So it's extra work to maybe add a, diff a flag for them so that it doesn't like break it, but always changes. Making PRs in the open source, I mean, I can have a patch locally, but they want like documentation, they want tests. It works for me, but it doesn't mean I can upload that uh, directly. Anyway, that's where we are. So, Bezel, Nix, for me at least, it works pretty well. Right, thanks, love the combined logo. Hey, thanks. Um, your feedback about open source was interesting considering you said you're part of an OSPO group, but uh, yeah. I, I had questions on putting NixPath in the build files. How does that turn out in practice if they change often? Like if you changed your Nix package set, you had all those link options, you'd have to go change quite a lot. I have a couple of questions. Feel free to answer whichever. It is, uh, it is automated. That's what I mentioned. So like the, the, the path is like, uh, it's a template and it's filled automatically. When oh, the, okay, I missed that. Sorry, thank you. And then have you thought the, sandbo the sandbox time was interesting. I don't know if you've thought about like if there could be a Nix, if you knew the machine you were going on to is Nix OS, like Build Buddy or something, could there be like a, a Nix sandbox strategy that this is, this is just the basal sandbox, so this has like yet nothing to do with Nix. 
Okay. The way I do it, like Nix happens in the, magically in the environment. So this is just Bazel, um, Docker being spawned by Bazel, and the Docker we use is empty. I mean, we are like literally using the smallest uh, available Docker image because we don't want anything from that. We take everything from Nix. Right. And okay. And then have you considered using origin? Maybe like taking those binaries so you wouldn't have the Nix prefix store problem at all. And if things used origin, they could be relative path to their other files. Yeah, but Nix doesn't use origin. <laughs> well, you, you seem happy to put a lot of patches on. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's one thing. I, I just like shoved it on the carpets. I can't theoretically do it. Uh, I didn't want to investigate that because I know that while theoretically Nix supports it, it has not been exercised for years. So I'm sure it just, even inside Nix, it doesn't work. And then I need to make it like work outside. So probably that capability of moving Nix to somewhere else is like gone, at least from Nix packages. It's hard coded everywhere. So we cannot move any of that anymore. Thanks for the talk. One more quick question? No? OK. Very good. Uh, all right. Fast, please. So I've implemented something much simpler than this. But you know, with Nix and Bazel, I'm sure, you know, as we've heard the last couple of days, several people have. This keeps being done over and over and over again. And I mean, this is an especially good and deep implementation of it. What do you think we can do to just figure out how to get this right and what's the next tool or what's, I mean, besides writing a book about it, which I, I or a, some, some more blog posts, which I know you've already done. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm hoping to do right now by uh, like open sourcing most of that and making like proof concept and example repos that people can use uh, ideally very easily. Uh, I mean, improving the tools, providing the re reference to everything. But at the same time, Nix and Bazel are both, they, they're just, they think they rule the world and they don't really want to be like a sub tool used by someone else. So when Nix tries to use Bazel, like Bazel is like, hey, I want to manage everything, so I won't tell you what are my dependencies or whatever. And when we do it this the other way around, it's also a bit like that. Nix is like, hey, I'm a perfect uh, hermetic build system, so I don't need to speak with others to integrate or interpret. Uh, from that sense, I think both of these projects are annoying. So. <laughs> in a very long term, my ideal would be to make like, this build system able to interoperate more easily. I don't know, maybe design some kind of protocol or like some tooling or like something that they can share the build graph. And so one tool can say, hey, that's the build graph I was planning to build. But if you want to do it in my stead, then that's fine because I'm not you know, keeping all the info from me. <laughs> and so, or maybe some remote execution protocol. That's probably the way forward. So like, if everyone speaks the same remote execution protocol, then you can say, Nix can start Bazel, and Bazel starts to Nix, and Nix say, hey, I'm a remote Bazel server, and all the opposites. We already have an implementation like that where we can use the remote execution protocol from Bazel to run Nix builds. Uh, that has been done as a tweak. Uh, it's an interesting project. I don't know if it's deployed anywhere yet, but that's a good proof of concept. <laughs>